Hey, my name is Jared Moon, and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training, and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals, and they aren't getting achieved at a Globo Gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey, hey, what's up? And we have Greg Eisenhower. How you doing, man? Good. How are you guys? I am good. Excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about all things Garage Gym Athlete with you because I can just already see in your office space um, some interesting things I can ask questions about. But let's get started with an intro, man. Who you are, what you do, and how you train. Okay. Uh, Greg Eisenhower. I'm 53. I'm father of two, both grown, and married for 34 years this year. Congrats. I okay. am, uh, I am uh, vice president of maintenance for a major trucking company here in the Dallas area. So that means I, I basically take care of all the trucks and trailers. I'm in charge of the mechanics and all that. So as exciting as that is. That's awesome. Well, yeah. The, the coolest thing about it was Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I, I'm, I'm stoked about, which is we're going we're gonna to meet up sooner or later. I know it's going to happen. One of these meetings. Yeah, you're right down the road from me, actually. Uh, I'll spend a lot of time right in that area. Yeah, I'm not far, man. Argyle's, uh, where are you at specifically in, in Dallas? Keller. Keller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I knew that. Yeah, you're not far away. No. Nope. One day. One day, man. Yeah. All right, tell us a little bit about your, um, your garage gym setup, what you're doing. Uh, well, I basically have a power rack that I built. Um, I have a rack that I bought. I have some... I have two bars, some bumpers. I have about 500 pounds of weight, kettlebells, a bag, pull-up bar, um, jump rope, some battle ropes, sandbags. I have just about everything you can imagine. So <laughs> Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty well set up. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, what is the actual garage like? Because I know in Texas, um, just being a Texan as well, you can get the, – the garages are no joke around here for the most part. Uh, what, what's your garage like? Like what's well, a, side. it's a full two car garage, um, which is totally taken up by my, by my gym, which my wife is a huge fan of, by the way. Huh. Yeah. I was gonna, um, I'm gonna have to ask you some tips on that. Cause right now <laughs> I, I don't know, like she really wants the spot for the car. I mean, there's all the hail in, in Texas that just randomly comes without you knowing. So I get right. it to a certain degree, but I also, there's a lot of unused space and potential I need to tap into, but she's not on board. Well, we can talk after. Uh, <laughs> I can give you some tips, man. Yeah, point me in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got the – but the whole garage is uh, basically my gym. So. That's great, man. And uh, so why did you decide to start a garage gym, and how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've actually been working out in the garage for probably two years. Um, I've been working out for a whole lot longer than that. I started uh, just running. They got into triathlon, uh, did a couple half Ironmans, a full Ironman, uh, was going to a local a gym doing that because they had a pool and I needed to swim five times a week. Uh, but I just got tired of getting up. It's a, it was a 20 minute drive over to the gym. And once I got my Ironman done, I, I, I kind of, uh, I don't want to say I lost interest, but I was, maybe I was burned out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so then I went out to the garage and I was, I was doing some weightlifting out there, just some random stuff. And, and I started doing some internet searches for you know programs i could get onto, and i can't i stumbled across you guys i did uh one man one barbell for a while um you know was scared to scared to commit i guess and uh you know i finally bit the bullet and and uh got in on the garage gym athlete and been doing it for a year now um and i love it i mean it's great that's awesome man and uh your track uh i'm on hard to kill and you have any plans of switching it up with the new cycle I don't. Um, okay. I actually, uh, I just did uh, the Baton Death March over the weekend. 
Oh, great. And I was, uh, I was thinking the whole time that I'm not too sure I could have done this if I hadn't trained the way I've trained for the last year and a half. Uh, that thing was a beast. It's no joke, uh, man. Marathon in the desert. Uh, yeah, no joke at all. (laughs) Yeah. 35 pound pack. I mean, it was, uh, it was a beast. That that's incredible. My hat's off to you on that. And and on that note, man, if, if you guys are just listening and you're not on YouTube, checking it out over in the corner, he's got just like metal after metal after metal. So, I mean, tell us just about that and that journey and, uh, kind of what you've, what you've been into to rack up all that kind of, uh, hardware. Well, it, it, uh, so probably when I was, I, I guess somewhere around 40, I went and got a physical. And at the time I thought, man, I'm in great shape. How bad could it be? And it was, it was for insurance at our work and they had three different, three different levels. And I wanted to get on the premium in order to do that. You had to get a physical and, I thought no big deal. How bad could it be? Um, I went and got the physical, sat down with the, with the nurse and she was like, well, do you plan on living to 50? And uh, I thought, well, yes, I had. And she <laughs> said, well, unless, unless you change some things, that's probably not going to happen. You know, I had, I was overweight, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, and I was like, well, that was kind of a wake up call. So I, I just started running um, around the house and I was doing probably three miles a night by myself um got bored with that turned it into well I, I i'll join a 5k i don't really care how i place uh, and then my competitive nature kicked in and it's like well I'm, if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna try to win it um so you know that's the wall you see behind me is probably i don't know 35 40 races um wow. my, my iron man's in there my half iron man's in there uh it's just a lot of work it's uh it's been quite a journey, man, but it's, it's, uh, it's well worth it. I'm, like I said, I'm 53 and I was passing kids this weekend that were 20, you know, and I'm, I'm glad I did it. It's, uh, this training is great. I mean, I'm in, I'm in better shape than I've ever been. And I'm, you know, past the half century mark, which is hard to believe. It's crazy to think you just went from casually signing up to a 5k to doing a full Ironman. I couldn't even fathom that. (laughs) Yeah, that's, uh, it was a progression. I mean, it, it, it went from, you know, running around the house to, uh, I, th- I think that was probably a three year journey, three and a half, something like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I get these wild things in my head and, and it sounds good when I, when I look at it and then it's like, well, let's go do that. You know, similar to this baton thing. It sounded like a great deal until you get three quarters of the way through it and then you wonder what you were thinking. So, <laughs> right. but, no, it's all been fun. I, I really like it. You know, it's, it's, uh, the harder it is, the more I like it. It's, it, I, I think. So my wife thinks I'm nuts and, and maybe that's true. It, we need to get together for the, the hotter than hell hundred up in Wichita falls. Yeah. I've looked at that a couple of times and I've just, I've never, I've never done it, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe we can chat about that. I'm doing it again. You're talking about that competitive nature is, you know, I've done it I think I've only done it actually twice, two or three times now, but at first it was just to survive, right? Just to challenge myself and see if I could do it. And I did it. And then the next year I, you know, shaved like an hour and a half off my time. And now I'm right. like now getting faster. And I'm like, well, now I, I don't think I can win it because, you know, there's actual professional cyclists who enter this thing, but I was like, I could do a hell of a lot better than, <laughs> than I've done, you know? And so right. I, I want to see what I can actually do if I, if I train for it um, and uh, get after a little bit more, but I completely understand where you come from that. The guy, I'm just going to, just going to try these out. And then you're like, well, this is a competition. So <laughs> <laughs> right, right, awesome, man. So uh, what's, what would you say your biggest goal is right now in, in training overall? Oh, probably right now is just to, um, you know, stay healthy and stay active. I've been, I don't want to say competing, but I've been certainly working out and, and you know, obviously you can see all the races I've been in, but I haven't been injured in 10 years and at my age, I think that's pretty good. That's um, awesome. You know, I have, uh, my, my overall reason for training is, is, uh, to, to just stay healthy and be active up until, you know, hopefully I pass away. I don't, you know, I, I just don't want to be one of those people that can't get around and can't do anything. And, um, I think, you know, I've been around enough people that have been active that, that my goal is just to stay active. And, you know, maybe I, maybe I can't push the weight like I used to or run as fast as I used to, but I can still run. And as long as I can do that, then I think I'll be okay. So my, my overall goal is just to stay healthy 
um, and, and be able to keep moving up until whoever knows when that is, you know, 80, I hope. <laughs> yeah, man, I think you're, you're crushing it and uh, well ahead of the curve. So that's awesome. Now, uh, so you kind of, I mean, did you just pick up fitness after that physical or had you done anything previously? <laughs> no, I've been active my whole life. I, w- I was, uh, I played baseball. I started playing baseball when I was five. I played all the way up through high school. I played football uh, up until my junior year. And then everybody outgrew me by six inches and 50 pounds. So I had to get out of that before I got killed. Hmm. Um, but I, I kind of, you know, I, I got out of high school, went into college and, and I kind of lost some of that, you know, sports and all those things. And it, it, it was work and family and raising kids. And I, I kind of, you know, everything just got put on hold until later on. Uh, I guess that physical was the the catalyst to restart, you know, but, but there was a, a span in there of probably 10 years, 15 years where I didn't do a whole lot of much. So. Got it, man. And uh, well, you're back at it now and uh, yeah. <laughs> get really getting after it. I think it's cool. What is your, what does your family think about it? Your wife and, and kids? Oh, they think I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, they thought the Iron Man was going to be the end of it. Um, and then I found, I found this baton deal and you know, they, they weren't sure about that. And I, I, I don't know. I think that they think I've lost my mind, but I, I I'm getting to the point now where it's almost the harder it is. I want to just see if I can do it. Um, You're going to so end up the hotter, in the death race with uh, Joe DeSena up in Vermont. Uh, that, yeah. That like. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting any more where, where I don't really, I don't like to run as much as I used to. I still do, but I don't run nearly as far or as fast. Uh, so I'm kind of looking for things like, like the rucking thing I just did. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not running so much as it is just, I guess it's a, you know, it, it, it's physical pain, but it's not running. So. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. Now I, I'd like to ask about the triathlon training cause I've never competed in a, in a uh, triathlon like that. And, but I have a, a lot of friends who, who do, and they've told me, you know, it's, it's like a commitment from like everyone, like even your family has to kind of be committed to you doing it because uh, it's no joke. It's not like you're training 30 minutes a day in the morning before you, before you go to work or something, you really have to put in the, the time if you want to survive and beyond survive, if you want to thrive. So tell me a little bit more about uh, juggling the training, what it looked like and uh, juggling that with your work and, and family life. Um, so for the full, when I did my full Ironman, yeah. um, my training ended up somewhere around 16 hours a week. Okay. Um, you know, it was, it was six days a week and I would get up Monday through Friday. Um, I would usually swim in the morning and then do something in the evening, whether it's run bike. Um, so I'd swim for an hour in the morning and then I'd come home and run or ride the bike or something like that. Uh, on the weekends, it was my, it was my long run and my long ride. Um, and in the end, you know, my, my rides were six and a half, seven hours. My runs were four and a half, five hours. So it was, it, it is, it's true. It's a huge commitment from my wife, especially my, my kids were both gone. Um, so aside from the fact that them just thinking I'd lost my mind, it, it didn't really <laughs> affect them a whole lot, but it, it did impact my wife quite a bit. Um, you know, and she was, she was very supportive, which I don't think, I don't really think you could do that without somebody supporting you like that. Cause it, it is a huge commitment. Um, it takes away all the free time on the weekends where you, where you typically go out to eat or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no, there's no, well, let's go eat, eat dinner and have a beer with somebody. Cause there's no beer. Uh, the food is very strict. It, uh, it becomes a lifestyle. And, and I think that just evolved into where I am today. Um, you know, I work out with you guys six days a week. I, I do your programming and then, you know, I'll, I'll ruck on the weekend or something like that. So it's just become a six day ritual for me perpetually, I hope. So well, that's awesome. So built some like really long-term habits and just training your training lifestyle, if you will. That's, that's really right. Cool. Right. Okay, great. Uh, well, let's hop into some of these questions, man. What's the hardest workout you've ever done? <laughs> um, well, up until yesterday, I probably would have said Murph, but uh, I- I'm going to throw out the the death march, man. That that thing. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, that is brutal. And what was the hardest part for you? Was it the discomfort of like uh, boots, feet, shoulders, 
uh, you, what's the, what's, what was the killer for you? Um, it was my, my legs and my hip flexors mainly. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I didn't get a blister, but man, my legs are smoked. I still can't walk right today. So that's been, <laughs> that's been two days. I, it may take me a week to get back to normal, but it was, it was really cool. Yeah. That's, uh, those hip flexors are a tricky, tricky muscle. I feel like that's always the problem I run into when I do uh, longer events that I wasn't prepared for. Um, I mean, or didn't, didn't realize how much it was going to be, um, you know, take a toll on the hip flexors. And so anytime like that comes up now, adding box steps into the routine, just as like a, you know, warm up, cool down type stuff. Cause the, those hip flexors will give out on you after, you know, after a couple hours and, and yeah, man, you, like, I- you never knew it was going to happen. Right. I, I underestimated that course big time. It, it is, it's brutal. I, I'll train for it differently next time. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Um, I would say just find a way to be uncomfortable. Um, whether it's being cold, fatigued, you know, just anything that, that takes you out of your comfort zone, uh, goes a long way to building mental toughness. You know, yesterday, or, or Sunday, I keep saying yesterday, but yesterday, um, at the, at the March, man, that I had, to, I had to dig for everything I had. It was, uh, I was, I was using every mind trick I've ever, I've ever learned, including some of them that you taught us. So it was, uh, I, I guess just being uncomfortable is, is the main thing I'd say. Yeah. I think that that goes a long way. And, um, what do you think the hardest part of it? I know we, we talked about physically, but was it, because you underestimated the course, do you think that's what like threw such a wrench in the, the mental game of it? I think so. I think, um, you know, I had, I had totally anticipated a different, I'd, I'd watched every, every video they had, every, everything. And I just was not ready for the altitude changes and all that. And, and I mean, you guys have done enough long-term stuff to know that, that uh, managing your emotions is a long, goes a long way into how you prepare and do in one of these events. And mm-hmm. I was pissed off at like the 12th mile. So it, uh, it wrecked the whole rest of the day. You know, it, it's kind of hard yeah. to recover from that. You know, it, it uh, I spent a long time being angry and, and, uh, yeah, it yeah. was, it was, it was a, full, it was a handful, man. It, 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 I'll train for it different. I promise. I think those are my, that's my go-to emotion too, with those longer events is anger. It's like, yeah. that's, <laughs> I, I don't get to uh, self-pity or like, any, it's just like, oh man, I'm just, no. off. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, I was cussing the course, the people around me, the, the people that designed it, I was myself. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. All right. If you could only, if you could have only one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's tough. I hear a lot of people say barbell and I, I like my barbell, but I, I think probably given what I've done over the last three or four months, I'd probably say my, my backpack, you know, you can just, you can do so many things with it. Um, you know, you can do all the weightlifting movements with it and, and plus it sucks to carry around for eight or nine hours. So I think I'd go with my backpack. Yeah. A load, man. That's a heavy load, long distance. That's, that's my yeah. opinion. That's what I think. Yeah. Tank- takes the most out of human beings and you did it you did about one of the hardest versions of it you can do we'll, we'll get one of those events going one time eventually <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen yeah. uh since you already have a a, a full garage and, and such what would be something you would want to add to your gym i'd really like to have a uh, a rower I, I don't have one yet um and I, I i think i'm missing out my wife does crossfit and she complains about the rower quite a bit so I think I'd like to throw one of those in there and just see if I can add some misery to my life. Like I don't have enough already, you know, it, it's a definitely a, a good mental tool. It's a mental yeah. toughness, uh, practicing tool. If you want to, like I, I had Joe doing some like mile repeats on it recently and, uh, 1500 repeats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds, that sounds like it's right up my alley. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Oh, Hey, again, I'm doing 1500 meter repeats. That's <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, uh, a lot of garage gym athletes out there listening to this, man, what would your best advice for them be? I would just tell them to, to stick with it, you know, no, no matter how bad it seems or how bad it sucks, you know, the, the, in fact, the worse it is, the better it is for you. I think, um, it teaches you a lot of things. Not only does it help you out physically, but mentally. Uh, so I would just tell you if it's cold, get out there and do it. If it's raining, get out there and do it. Just do it. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm of that mindset now. I can't imagine not getting out and training every day. Um, 
So I would, I, you know, just, just do it day in and day out and you'll be glad that you did. Awesome. Love it, man. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, we'll definitely have to link up for some, some more Texas fun, but uh, I appreciate your time and uh, being here. Sure, man. Glad to be here. <laughs>